Hey guys, it's Thelonious Monk's birthday, at least when this was recorded on October 10th, 2000. A monk would have been 103 years old today. Thelonious Monk, today we celebrate Thelonious Monk, the great jazz piano player. And I actually regard Monk as the greatest composer in all of jazz. And those who disagree with me would probably say it's Duke Ellington. Well, let's, let's just uh, make an agreement. Duke Ellington, definitely the greatest of the jazz age. 20s and 30s, but 40s, mid 40s and beyond, greatest composer of the bop, hard bop, post bop eras would be Thelonious Monk. I think that, uh, I don't think I need to prove that, but let's just say it's tr <laughs> true. My, my opinion. Uh, Monk composed a lot of tunes that were very original, and his style was extremely original, and a lot of people found it weird, quirky, uh, eccentric. Uh, you could also use words like um, angular and qu quirky. Did I already say quirkily? And even childlike. Uh, his tunes are unlike anybody else's tunes. The melodies, like this one that you're hearing, if you can hear that. Uh, what song is that? I don't know. Don't put me on the spot. We're listening to a Monk Live concert in Denmark. Um, anyway, Monk's style of composing, very unusual. His, his style of composing, his personality, and his piano player, piano playing, all very unusual. All shared those, those characteristics that people found to be off-putting at first. Uh, later on in life, he was suspected of having mental illness. I won't get too much into that story, but uh, was he schizophrenic? Was he bipolar? Was he on the autism spectrum? His behavior, especially in later years, was very strange and doctors wanted to do things like put him on uh, electroconvulsive therapy, ECT, where they put the things in your head, like in a, like in a cuckoo's nest. Uh, but they did put him on drugs like lithium. And if you see his uh, uh, behavior, such as in the film, um, what was that documentary called? Straight No Chaser, I guess is the documentary that Clint Eastwood made. His behavior is strange. He dances around, he sings, he doesn't necessarily make eye contact. Anyway, let's talk about the good things about Thelonious Monk. Composed a lot of great tunes. He composed the most often recorded tune in jazz, which would be Round Midnight. And that is the most recorded jazz tune created by a jazz musician. There are a lot of standard tunes that were composed as pop tunes that may have been recorded more, but Round Midnight stands as the most recorded jazz tune composed by a jazz musician uh, and I would say of the I think he's credited with 70 or 80 tunes uh, as originals those tunes as a set are the most recorded tunes of any other composer in jazz every tune he ever composed there are probably dozens of recordings of each of those tunes especially the famous ones that you guys have heard over and over but he's got a lot of great tunes that you don't hear that often um, Another, uh, another accolade of his uh, in terms of getting into popular culture. Only five jazz musicians were ever featured on the cover of Time magazine. Three of the greats, Louis Armstrong, Duke Ellington, and Thelonious Monk. They never got around to Charlie Parker or Coltrane or Miles. Whatever. They ain't perfect. Uh, I'm going to show you some records, guys. Don't worry. i got a bunch of records to show you. And uh, let's just go through some records real quick. What else do I want to say about Monk? He's great. Oh, also he's the most quoted jazz musician of all time. And when I say quote, I'm referring to musical quotes. And this is my own impression. I can't prove this because nobody's done the math on it. But in terms of when jazz musicians are playing solos, they very often will, on the sly, on the, on the down low, sneak in a couple of notes or even a bar or two of a Thelonious Monk tune. And I see that in live music all the time. It's kind of the musician's almost unwritten um, secret uh, inside joke is to play a quote from Monk. Who in the audience gets it? Who in the audience is hip enough to recognize every Monk tune? I don't know all of them, but I certainly know the, the top 20 or 30. So I can't prove that because no one has done an analysis of every live jazz club concert ever. No one can because they weren't recorded, but 
uh, on a regular basis you will hear Monk tunes quoted by other musicians as a as a tip of the hat to the great master. So I'm gonna go through, I just have, you know, two or three records to show you guys about Monk. I'll go through them quickly though. Thelonious Monk Orchestra at Town Hall in, um, I should have been prepared with the dates of all these, 1959. Town Hall is a great concert venue in New York City, right there in Manhattan. Uh, Donald Byrd on trumpet, Phil Woods on alto, Charlie Rouse, is it Roos or Rouse? Pepper Adams on baritone, uh, Art Taylor on drums, 1959. The recording of the song Thelonious on here. He's got a song about himself, yeah, called Thelonious. Pretty cool. Uh, I'll hit on some of the major t tunes as they come up. Uh, Crepuscule with Nelly is on here. What is a Crepuscule? Somebody told me it was a kind of donut. I don't know. Um, Nelly was one of, was that his second wife? Nelly was his wife. Having a Crepuscule with Nelly. Here's a record I just got about two weeks ago. Milt Jackson with the Thelonious Monk Quintet. Milt, J Milt Jackson, the great uh, vibes player with the uh, modern jazz quartet with Thelonious Monk. Side one is mostly Milt Jackson stuff. Side two is pretty much all Thelonious Monk stuff. The song Mysterioso and Evidence 4 in 1. 4 in 1 is one of the weirdest songs that, that Monk ever uh, created. One of my favorites. You don't hear it that often. It's very complicated, actually. Uh, and I should have mentioned, I should always mention the label, but that was on, uh, oh my goodness, that's on Blue Note. But that's electronically rechanneled from stereo, which is not that desirable. Originally mono. Okay, the Columbia period. Monk, a major talent, was signed with a major label. Columbia, AKA CBS. I don't think Columbia took that great a care of him in terms of the way they presented him. A lot of their album cover artwork is very weak. Their recording quality is not really as sparkling as, let's say, Blue Note or um, Prestige, Riverside. But Mysterioso, one of the classic tunes that I love, one of my favorite tunes. And this is Charlie Rouse, Larry Gales, Ben Riley, who plays uh, what tunes? Well, you needn't. Bemsha Swing, Evidence, plus some standards like All the Things You Are and Honeysuckle Rose. We're going to get through these quick. Another one on Columbia. Crisscross, The Two Pianos, and Charlie Rouse again. Hackensack, which is named after New Jersey, City of New Jersey. Rhythmaning is a real famous one. Crepuscule with Nelly is on there again. Crisscross. Okay, here's a really interesting record. If you're new to jazz, if you're more of a rock fan than a jazz fan, this is not a Thelonious Monk record. This is a tribute to Thelonious Monk by the great Hal Wilner. Hal R Wilner was a music producer and impresario. And you guys know him from producing the uh, Saturday Night Live music in the early years anyway. So this is, this is a tribute album. Uh, lots of popular artists doing Thelonious Monk tunes. And this is a two record set. Um, a lot of the artists are mentioned on here. A lot of artists that you've heard of. I'll read through some of them real quick. There's many, many on here, but this record can be found very inexpensively, and I like it a lot. Uh, let's see. Bruce Fowler, the Fowler Brothers, NRBQ. Uh, Donald Fagan from Steely Dan is on, does a song on here. Dr. John, the great uh, New Orleans piano player who just died, does Blue Monk on here. Mysterioso is done by the Carla Blay Big Band with uh, Kenny Kirkland and Hiram Bullock. And we've got Todd Rundgren doing 4-in-1, which is one of my favorite tracks on here. You've got Steve Lacey. You've got John Zorn, who I've featured a number of times, the uh, avant-garde alto sax player, doing a very weird version of Shuffle Boyle. Uh, who else, who else? Shockabilly does a tune on here. Um, who else? The singer Joe Jackson does a really nice version of Round Midnight with a, sort of a big band. That's actually a string orchestra doing Round Midnight. Uh, Bob Cranshaw plays bass on there. Um, Bobby McFerrin does Friday the 13th with Bob Duro. Most of you are too young to know some of these names. Uh, Chris Spedding with Peter Frampton and Marcus Miller and Anton Figg. Steve Lacey again. Steve Swallow. Anyway. Too much information about one great record. Get a hold of it if you can. Another tribute album. 
tribute to Mike and Bird by uh, Thad Jones and George Adams and others. So this is more conventional, big band sounding stuff. I got all the uh, tributes back to back here for some reason. The Kronos Quartet, great string quartet, does a lot of modern music. A lot of string quartet music, but their, their tribute to Thelonious Monk with Ron Carter on bass, produced by Oren Keepnews. And they do pretty much a quick run through of many of the great Monk tunes. Well, You Needn't, Off Minor, Epistrophe, Mysterioso. This is a very cool record on Landmark. What is the Landmark label? I don't even know. What's the Landmark label? I forgot. Did I show Criss Cross already? Do I have two copies? I think I already showed you Criss Cross. I didn't know I had two copies. How'd that happen? We'll have to figure out which one is the good one. Monk with Johnny Griffith live at the Five Spot Cafe in New York City. Uh, 1958, the great Roy Haynes on drums, who just turned 95, and Johnny Griffith on sax, and again, all the great monk tunes that you'd expect. A lot of the same tunes get recorded over and over, and it's very interesting to find out what the best uh, and what your favorite performance is. Okay, here's an unusual one because it's Thelonious by himself, just solo, only Thelonious on the Riverside label. Uh, and he does mostly tunes that aren't monk tunes. April in Paris. If you recognize Round Midnight being played right here. Everyone should know that tune. Uh, oh my goodness. Coltrane plays on here. Thelonious Monk by himself has John Coltrane and Wilbur Ware on side two. Uh, 1957. Monk's Mood is on here. This is just a quick run through of my LPs, guys. There's other stuff I have strewn throughout the house that I didn't find in time for this video. Monk with Jerry Mulligan, the great baritone sax player. 1957, Wilbur Ware on bass again. What tunes do they do? Round Midnight, Straight No Chaser, I Mean You. Monk's Big Band and Quartet. Osaka, Japan. And uh, on Columbia. I got tons of records, guys. I don't know what I have. It always changes and they're unorganized. They're slightly organized. There's an old one on Prestige. Cool cover artwork. Who's that by? Engineered by Rudy Van Gelder. Percy Heath on, pian uh, on bass. Art Blakey on drums. That's a nice little quartet. Trio. That's a trio. Thelonious Monk Trio, Little Rudy Tootie, Monk's Dream, Trinkle Tinkle. This is the last one of my collection. I've got more somewhere around here. Do I have any on the CD rack? Uh, let's see. Oh, somewhere. I've got the Palm Motion, Bill Frizzell, Monk in Motion project on CD somewhere. I should have pulled it out. Great, great recent recording. Take a look for that. This is called Just Monk. Just Plain Old Monk on Columbia. Nice nice cover if you can make it out. Um, what is this record? Uh, I don't know. It's got Panonica on it. And that's a song I should have mentioned. Panonica named after the Baroness whose name I can't pronounce. Panonica something, Baroness of the Rothschild fortune. The Baroness, Panonica, was a wealthy, wealthy lady in New York high society, and she was a patron and a supporter of not only Charlie Parker, uh, but also Thelonious Monk. And I think one of the two died at her house. Which was it? I get those two mixed up in terms of the story. I think it was Charlie Parker that died at her house and gave refuge to him when he uh, needed support. So, a song written about the Baroness Panonica. Uh, guys, pull out your Charlie, uh, Charlie Parker. Who is it? Thelonious Monk. Pull out your Thelonious Monk records. Give him a listen on his birthday, October 10th. A great new record just came out about Monk that I, I don't have yet, but I've been listening to. The Palo Alto concert that was recorded at Palo Alto High School, supposedly by the janitor 
and that record sat un, uh, unrecorded or unreleased, I should say, for 50 plus years and was just recorded on the imp or just released on the Impulse label. A number of you watchers on the vinyl community have a copy of that and have shown it. I gotta get a copy. I've just been listening to it in the last couple of days. So, guys, Thelonious Monk, one of the greatest composers of all time, greatest in jazz at least for the last uh, last half of the 20th century. Give it a listen. And happy birthday, Thelonious. And thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe to the Vinyl Rundown channel. And uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And I will talk to you soon. How do you turn off this camera? Click the button and bye-bye.